Sego Sego Guego, everybody, and welcome to my channel. I'm Chef Tanya Brandt, and I'd like to welcome you, and I hope this video finds everybody safe during this time. So one of my inspirations for my YouTube channel was just really to answer questions that even I had as a beginner, and a lot of things that I can't find on YouTube, um, simple questions for indigenous cooks, and a lot of the questions that we have in regards to our foods, because there's not a lot of places for us to go um, not all of us know a chef or somebody that's really proficient in using a lot of our indigenous ingredients. So I thought making this information out to everybody would uh, really benefit our people and um, I'm really happy that you join me today. So today what we're going to talk about is the variety and different types and uses of corn flours. I get a lot of questions, uh, what is the difference between corn and cornmeal? What does masa mean? What's masa harina? What is nixtamalization? So I get a lot of these questions and I thought this would be a really good chance and an opportunity to touch on those things. Uh, so what I did is I just took some various corn flours that I had at my house and I just kind of wanted to explain some of the differences and maybe some of their uses that um, we can use them for. So I think um, what I'll start out with is probably the most recognizable, which is cornmeal. Right, so this is used for um, like Johnny Cake cornbread, like the Southern style cornbread. So this is just a yellow corn that's been pulverized to this nice fine, and it, but it's a little bit bigger grains um, than a flour. So this is that's what makes it a meal, right? So that's a corn meal, and it can be used for like pancakes. Um, all of them probably can be used for pancakes, actually. <laughs> so a common question I get is, can you use cornmeal to make cornbread? Um, and the answer is yes, that's what we use it for. But I use it for regular, like Southern style cornbread, but I do mix in flour with it um, because it would make a really, it's a really dense, heavy, um, and the, the mouthfeel texture is not really something our people are really um, used to anymore. Right? Our palates are kind of different, so. Um, I definitely mix it with uh, regular flour and then obviously there's tons of flours that you can um, mix it with whether if you want to make it gluten free or healthier or organic or just use whatever it is that you have on hand. Um, this one is a white corn flour so you'll see what it is is it's just a finer grind so it does look more like your regular um, AP flour um, but it's corn it's white corn and it's nice and bright and um, this I would probably use the same, um, but it can also be used for making like an atoli, like a, a Mexican style drink. And um, I just, that's basically the only really big difference is just it's finer. So that's corn flour, whereas of course this one's corn meal. One of the flours that we have, this is something um, my mother grew. So this is our Haudenosaunee sweet black corn. And I ground this one bigger because this is something, um, the, a larger grind like this is something that we would use for traditionally for our corn mush. And um, it's a little different than what you see from the Southwest. They'll use something that's really nice and fine like that. Um, but ours, uh, we like to have it chunkier, um, almost kind of like a grits type of texture, but these haven't been mixed, mixed to malize. It's just the corn and it's been ground and um, we just use it like that and this one's really pretty this one's one of my favorite corns to work with because you can when you make it into corn mush it comes out this really vibrant nice purple and it's just something that I, I really love to do in terms of indigenizing our diets this is a flour I like to use for when we make our scone um, that's traditionally just made with regular um, wheat flour but in terms of indigenizing our diets and working in those different, because th we don't have to be 100%. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take this and maybe use half of this flour and replace the all-purpose flour. And that way it's just, it's just a way of reducing the amount of wheat that we're taking into our diet. And that's what it's about. It's just about little steps and what we can do to work it in to our diet and, and, and help us, right? Because no matter what we do, every little bit helps, right? It's gonna help our diet and it's helping our people and um, we're seeing those benefits in Indian country of people working in these traditional foods into their diet. Yeah, all three of these are um, masa, or masa harina, you'll hear it called. Um, what masa means is it's the corn flour and it's been taken, it's been nixtamalized. So it's been gone through that lying process where it removes the outer hull on the corn. And then we take it and then they make this really fine um, corn flour with it. So these corn flours um, can have different purposes as well. These ones are commercially bought ones. Um, 
because I like to touch on that as well because um, not everybody grows or not everybody has access to things so utilizing what's available in our grocery stores are really helping and uh, we just a lot of people don't have time just to, <laughs> to make corn flour we're not all chefs and and, and we want to make our food as approachable and as easy as possible so any of these three you can make um, our traditional leaf bread with um, the southwest are called tamales and a cool thing that I didn't know is that the word tamale actually comes from the next tamalization word that next tamal tamal that's the word tamale comes from so that was something I just learned that it was I thought was cool. Uh, so when I say nixtamalization, um, that's that process for Haudenosaunee people, we say we lied corn or it's washed corn. And that just means that the hull has been cooked in an in a alkaline solution, which we use white wood ash. Um, in the Southwest, they'll use um, like the chemical lime and it takes off the outer hull and it puts also the nutritional benefits into it as well. So these corns are more um, more nutrient dense than one that isn't. Um, so I've made, yes, leaf breads with, with each of these. Um, so this one is that Mesca company and theirs is a little different and this is the pan variety. I actually prefer working with this one. Um, I'm not sure, it's finer, like this one is finer, but um, it's the mouthfeel that, it, um, that I, I, I don't, um, I just prefer this one. So I'll use that one as much. So if we're making um, tortillas or tortilla chips, um, tamales, uh, those are different things that you make where you would use um, the nixtamalized flours. So these six here are just um, a good example of what I have in my pantry. And there are things that I, because I never know what I'm gonna cook, so <laughs> I like to have options. So. Um, but yeah, I would just go through them quickly. Like this is something I would make a traditional Johnny cake with, um, a polenta. Um, this is just a finer um, variation of that. And this is also something, a good substitute as well that I would put into our oven bread and just to reduce that gluten content. Um, okay, so thank you for listening today. Um, be sure to uh, hit the subscribe and like button on this video if you'd like to see more videos like this um, in the future. And I'll also be uploading some new content uh, working with some of these flowers. And um, I look forward to seeing you then. Mm -hmm.